Good morning and welcome to Politics Nation. On the show today, taking a knee during the national anthem. Now even President Trump is fueling the fire. When somebody disrespects our flag, to say, get that son of a b off the field right now, out, he's fired. He's fired! We'll talk about the dark racial sentiment in President Trump's criticism of the NFL and the NBA. And it's not just pros, but high schoolers and even third graders are following the NFL players like Colin Kaepernick and Michael Bennett. And later, Senator Cory Booker gained prominence as America's most hands-on big city mayor. Now the Democrat from New Jersey is working hard to become a hero to millions fighting the Trump agenda. We'll hear his thoughts on your health care, American race relations, and whether or not he's running for president. But first, only a year after then-candidate Donald Trump asked African Americans what they had to lose by voting for him, we now know there's plenty at stake under his presidency. And it's against this backdrop that the Congressional Black Caucus met this week for its first legislative conference of the Trump era. Joining me is CBC member and congressman Gregory Meeks, Democrat of New York, and Jason Johnson, politics editor of The Root and professor at Morgan State University. Uh, Congressman Meeks, uh, you and I go way back. Uh, we even took a knee when there was a police uh, killing in New York in 99 and were arrested together with former Mayor Dinkins standing up to Mr. Trump's friend Rudy Giuliani. Now we see people taking knees uh, and a nonviolent protest asking America to deal with racial inequality. And the president calls them SOBs, calls their mothers out their name. Now, this is a president that said they were fine people among neo Nazis, but calls people SOBs for nonviolent protests, calling attention to racial disparities. How does the Congress, the Democrats in the Congress, the Black Caucus respond to that. I mean, I think y'all should take a knee at the next uh, State of the Union address or walk out like he said to walk out on the players. I mean, how do you respond to this and what are y'all going to do about it? Well, you know, Rev, <clears throat> there's going to be great dialogue. Number one, uh, I, for one, am going to be boycotting the White House, that's for sure. And I think uh, all goodwill people, uh, black, white, red, yellow, brown, uh, this president is an absolute disgrace for what this country is and all that it has gained. And every time he opens his mouth, you really understand when he says he wants to make America go back to where America was. Because America has been made great because of protests, like from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., like from athletes like Muhammad Ali, uh, Lou, uh, the then uh, Lou Alcindor, who then changed his name, uh, and people called him disrespectful, to Kareem Abdul Jabbar. Uh, we can't not go back to those times, and we cannot be silent. And I think it's incumbent upon members of Congress, the Congressional Black Caucus, to make sure that our voices are loud and clear, uh, that we continue to do uh, what we have. Have been doing in promoting uh, legislation that would be beneficial to all Americans, but you know, taking care of those uh, who are African Americans and those who have uh, been victimized by police brutality and others. And yes, we will be talking about strategies uh, that we will, that we will undertake uh, when we get back in the session. No, uh, I, I, I think there has to be a dramatic uh, way of doing it as we've done. Uh, not only in the past, but in the recent future, I mean, in the recent present, rather, like around uh, the Trayvon Martin case and others, because really we're calling for attention on the issues. And what is so, uh, to me, uh, 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 so distracting is the president ought to be addressing the issues of inequality rather than distracting us with name-calling. Deal with what they're protesting about, Mr. President, and that's why I said the caucus and others should take a knee 
or walk out because we ought to force them to deal with the issues of income inequality, educational inequality, and inequality in the criminal justice system, Congressman Meeks, not just to call people's names or their mother's name. Deal with your policies. I, I, I agree with you, Beverly Now, Unfortunately, I don't know if this president has the intelligence to deal with it. Uh, he has clearly not put people around. Look at the people that he put in uh, for uh, Secretary of Education, who doesn't understand education. Climate change is out. I don't know if we have the first incompetent president of my lifetime, that's for sure, and the, one, the only one that I know. So I don't know if he's competent enough to deal with those issues. Uh, when I look at how he's done, what he said at the U.N. and on the world stage, and as I listen to world leaders around, there's a question of his competency. Uh, and if this was any other country, and what we should be calling for is a recall election uh, in which uh, the American people, and I think uh, the majority of American people who did not vote for him in the first place, if we were in a parliamentary procedure, we would be calling for a recall vote right now so that we can get rid of the president and have another election, particularly on top of the fact that when we keep digging into these investigations and showing his connection to Russia and others that was involved in this, uh, there should be a recall election. Election. Uh, and so I think that, yes, I think there's got to be something to demonstrate to the world that uh, we're not going to be silent and just sit back uh, and that we will take action. I would, and I would hope it's not just African Americans. Right. It's right. all good right. people. It should be more than just African. Because this is not an African American issue. This is an issue of people of goodwill and people who love this country to stand up for it. Now, Jason, I think that's critical, that this is not just African Americans that ought to be standing up. It should be uh, people of all races. It should be whites, blacks. And I think we've tried to demonstrate that from the 60s and the civil rights movement of that era all the way to recent 1,000 ministers march where it ended up 5,000, showing collective here. Right. But also keeping the focus not on the protest, but on what we're protesting for. Because what I keep emphasizing is let's not let those that are suffering get lost in the drama between stars and the president. There are people actually suffering. That ought to be the priority, and that's what we're taking to need to dramatize. Well, yeah, Rev, I agree. And, and one of the things, <clears throat> black, white, you know, whatever, Hispanic, Latino, Asian, I, I always say this is important, never forget, Remember, the man lost the popular vote. Like, the majority of people, and, and, and that was a multicultural coalition that voted for Hillary Clinton that said, we don't really want this, this, this man who's a white supremacist sympathizer who has a history of abusive women, uh, abusing women. Most people did not want him to be president of the United States. But I do think this is critical uh, when it comes to what we all think is probably going to end up happening today. Uh, when hundreds, and I, I just saw a tweet this morning that the entire offensive line uh, of, the, uh, of the, the soon-to-be Vegas Raiders, the Oakland Raiders, is going to take a knee. You're going to have people taking knees all throughout. The key to this, like marches and anything else, is what happens next. That's right. Are every single one of these guys going to go out and say, hey, let's register to vote? Or all of these players, remember, there's elections in New Jersey. There's elections in Virginia this year. As long as this activism manifests itself in change on the ground. And a lot of these players give money. That's great. I mean, and, 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 and too many people don't do that. But if it turns into voting this fall, yeah. that is the kind of long-term change we want to see. Other than that, it just becomes symbol, and we leave the victims, uh, which are millions of people in the lurch, talking right. about millions of congressmen quickly. What's going to happen with health care? Does John McCain not uh, saying that he will not support it? Does it kill it? What are you hearing from your upper chamber over there in the Senate? I'm hearing that the votes are not there, that they're as uh, John McCain made his decision and the other two senators that have uh, been worked on that's against it, uh, that they are hearing from doctors, health care providers, insurance carriers, their constituents, that they will not change their votes, which makes this dead. You know, um, September 30th is the deadline. If they can't do it, the rules change, uh, and he cannot push this through. So I tell all good Americans again, look and talk to those senators, support those that are voting no, because it would be disastrous to end the Affordable Care Act. All right. Thank you, Congressman Greg Meeks and Jason Johnson. And uh, let's take a knee, but then get up and do some work. Coming up.